Beer 30 is when you walk into a bar or a VFW, and in that 30 seconds, you can already tell. That guy right there is drunk, that guy's an idiot, and that guy down there knows it all. There are programs out there beyond the VA. Many nonprofit organizations. The Beer 30 Show. It's the Beer 30 Show. Made by veterans. For veterans. All right, everybody, thank you once again for tuning in to the Beer 30 Show, brought to you by Common Ground Golf Course, a place for all and all the game teaches. Today's program, uh, we, got a, we got a real good program, a good friend of mine. Uh, not only is he a two-time Super Bowl world champion, uh, we'll, 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 we'll kind of ignore the, the New England part, but two-time two, two Super Bowl champion Lonnie Paxton, uh, he's going to tell us a little bit about Active Force Foundation, uh, what he's doing, how he uh, came about doing it, and uh, everything all in that section. So, Lonnie... Thank you so much for uh, taking the time to be on our show. I know you're a busy, busy man. No worries, guys. Thanks for having me. And don't shortchange me, Joel. It's three Super Bowls, not two, buddy. Oh, three Super Bowls. My bad. My bad. Uh, we figured since you played for New England, we could take one out. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, I got one to spare, so you can have one. Oh, okay, okay. We'll 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 take the uh, tuck rule from back in two thousand one. <laughs> yeah, you can have that one. That's easy. Um. So, so Lonnie, uh, tell us about your uh, program. What? What? How did you guys start, and what do you guys do? Uh. Well, let's see. So, back in uh, we'll call it nineteen ninety. Or 1994, a uh, really good friend of mine, his name's Brooke Ducanel. Um, he was an aspiring professional su uh, snowboarder. Uh, he was, you know, in action sports, you, you, you go big um, and you make it and you, you, you get, you know, uh, photos in the magazines and, and uh, all the social media attention. And, and if you don't, sometimes, a lot of times you get hurt. So he was uh, doing a back, double backflip and he over rotated and landed on his shoulders and mm -hmm. Uh, ended up breaking his spinal cord um, in, in Mammoth Mountain. So, you know, the, the, uh, a lot of his friends kind of rallied around to support him. And, and at the time, you know, I was just trying to get him healthy and get him back, you know, kind of positive and thinking in the right direction. And, um, you know, that he was very active. And so we tried to, to, to find a, find something for him that he could continue to do, uh, you know, without the use of his legs. And, and uh, he stumbled across, across – uh, four-wheel downhill mountain biking and uh, became very passionate about it. Uh, growing up in Southern California, there's not much snow, so you know, we have a lot of uh, dirt hills and dirt roads and, and kind of uh, lower mountain ranges, and so uh, it made complete sense. And, and uh, we rallied around, got him his first bike, and, and, uh, and, and he fell in love with it, and, and he wanted to give back. And so we started a foundation, me, him, and, and an engineer from Specialized Mountain Bike, and and decided to call it the Active Force Foundation. And uh, you know, at first we were we were building one bike, maybe two bikes at a time, and donating them to to whether it was uh, wounded soldiers, whether it was kids with uh, you know muscular dystrophy, um, you know, just really inspiring them to get outside and and uh, and, and be more active. And we found that uh, you know a lot of these kids and and, and guys coming back from overseas didn't have a a ton of support or funding to go out and, and, and take the bike up these hills and do it themselves. And so, you know, we were, we were having these bikes just gather dust in, in people's garages and, and uh, storage. And so then we decided to, to, to create camps and uh, we've implemented camps in winter park uh, up in uh, North star Tahoe um, up in Whistler, Canada. And we were able to, to provide, you know, five, six bikes into this camp and help fund, uh, some trainers and, 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 uh, you know, physical therapists to help, you know, teach them how to get in and out of the bike off on and off the list and go down the hill and, and, you know, really create a, a fun atmosphere for them rather than feeling, uh, like they're burdened from, you know, having this big piece of equipment and, and, and they, you know, they might be, you know, down and out. And so, you know, our main goal is really to, 
to just inspire uh, kids and people, uh, you, you know, to get outside and and not let you know some of their uh, their injuries or their disabilities kind of uh, overcome their 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 love for the outdoors and and, and active lifestyles. That's awesome. Totally awesome. Yeah, you know, um, I, I'm looking at these bikes and the how, how many bikes do you think that you've let, – let's take it for this year. How many bikes do you think that you'll be able to make this year? Um, we have an order for four bikes right now. Okay. Um, we're looking to, you know, get those into uh, – you know, what we're really looking for is – is a, is a partner, um, in this process because the bikes aren't cheap. And so, right. you know, um, you, you got these professional mountain bikes that cost five or $6,000. Well, this one has four wheels and, and, uh, you know, it's basically double the price, double the size. And so they're not cheap. And so a, a partner would help offset those costs. Uh, they would help, uh, really lend credibility to, to the program. Um, and so, you know, we've, we're, we're kind of in the, in this, in this rebuild mode where although we might not be, um, producing a lot of bikes, you know, we're planning to, to try and create, uh, an order system to where, you know, a, a, uh, a Vail mountain or, um, you know, some other, uh, like mammoth mountains could, could order five or six, um, and pay for them all at once. And we're, we're basically the, the middleman now. So we've, We've, you know, we it's it's tough to be funded these days in in the economy, and so we yeah, we take the back seat, taking the back seat of of raising a bunch of money and making bikes and giving them away to these programs where we're now we're kind of the facilitator um, of these programs, and so we have a lot of programs reaching out to us asking us, you know, how can we support? How can we get some bikes, you know, into a program? How can we even start, uh, you know, a program if we've never done it before? So a lot of it is just, uh, you know, coming in and kind of creating the model and then taking a step back. So, so how can uh, people donate and help you guys out? Uh, since we're on the subject, yeah, I mean it's it's um, you know every little bit helps. It becomes uh, harder when when you know we're taking some donations, uh, you know, just from random people, you know, in a in like a submit portal or a PayPal because they might not see where the, the money goes because it is going into this process of uh, developing these programs and and trying to get bigger sponsors. And so, you know, I would just suggest that, you know, the emails from the website and, and, and let us know their thoughts and feelings and if they have any, you know, connections or, um, or suggestions that, you know, we could kind of just uh, brainstorm together. And I think that's enough for us right now rather than just, you know, cutting a check. For us, we're, we're really trying to, to hold hands in this process and do it together rather than just accept money and, and uh, you know, get a write off for it. So for us, that's the most important thing is, is is trying to make something that's scalable that we can you know get into the hands of of a lot of people and not just a couple select resorts. So do you guys only do like uh, spinal injuries and that kind of stuff, or do you help people that have brain injuries that like the Broncos, like Joel? Oh wow, show yourself. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, we it's everybody. You know, it's uh, if if you have use of your hands. And you can sit in this bike, and you can, you can, you know, be willing to, to kind of take a leap of faith and and, and, and cruise down this hill and get outside. And then, then yes, we we support it. We, in the past, we've we've had we've had guys from Colorado Springs and and the base down there, and we've we've, we've supported you know kids who were who had some muscular uh, issues and and spina bifida, and we we've, we've also supported you know guys with missing limbs. And so uh, I think we we don't want to pigeonhole us into, you know, athletes. I mean, I see this bike as something that me, Joel, you know, my buddy who doesn't have use of his legs and, and our, you know, our grandpa can go in and we can take a, a nice leisurely ride down the hill and get outside and, you know, take advantage of the scenery that uh, Colorado and some of these mountain ranges provide. So I got, I got a question just by looking at it. What What is the difference, Lonnie, between – the, the bikes that you make and the, the cat trikes that the cat trikes make, what, what, what's the difference? And, and keep in mind, I have no idea, nothing uh, really about the, the structure of the, the bike. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty new at this biking thing. Yeah, I mean, this is, this, ours is all gravity-based, so there's no pedals, you know, so you have to get up, you either have to, uh, you know, get a ride up to the top of the hill or take a ski lift. 
Oh, um, wow. So there's no fl- there's no flat landing, uh, no pedal system, nothing like that. So it's all gravity based. We go downhill and and uh, and then you know got to get a hand and, and go back up. And so uh, you know that's where some of these other bikes have uh, a pedal system and okay. maybe you use your hands to pedal and whatnot. So yeah, ours is a bit different, but you know, it's all state of the art and it's uh, it's it's got 12 inches of travel on the front and back and wow. I mean this thing can fly over. Fly over rocks and, and 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 ditches like, just like a quad would. Yeah. So evidently, the difference between your bike and a cat trike is your bike. You better hold on your balls and just just let them free, cause you, you you're going to go a lot faster down the hill with this than the cat trike. Yeah, but there's a good braking system, so you go at your own speed. You know, that's the that's the beauty of it. Awesome, awesome. Danny, do you uh, do you have anything? Um, not at the moment, really. I mean, what, what's your guys' website so people can go to the website and check you guys out? And uh, how do people... Uh, uh, active, activeforce.org. You might have all our information on there, and, and uh, the emails go through there, and our, our uh, phone number's on there. So, yeah, activeforce.org. And is there a way for people to volunteer with you guys or anything of that nature? You know, at the moment, um, we're we're a, we're a pretty tight ship. We got we got three individuals who have three separate career paths, and we we meet in the middle on on some things and try and you know do the best. So, you know, we although we appreciate volunteers, I don't know if we have a, a an event right now to support. You know, we've we've used Keith uh, daily up in Colorado to help throw some events to help raise some money, and I think it's more event based rather than just day to day. So, you know, as these events come up, we'll we'll definitely loop you in and and if we need some support then then that's i think what we, we would call on it awesome awesome well lonnie the next time that you're in colorado you know to make sure to get a hold of me especially if you're doing a, a active force uh an event in colorado because i uh, remember you did the uh the bowling the celebrity bowling lane and i don't know how much uh, I don't know how much revenue you generated if it, if if that went to Active Force. I I hope it did, but yeah, make oh, sure. Oh, it did. It definitely definitely did, um, and that helped you know secure our bikes up in Winter Park and help bring bring that program to life. So you know that's where you can see uh, um, some Crested Butte has a program, Winter Park has a program. So that's where you kind of if you were up there, that's where you'd see it come to life. Awesome. Totally awesome. Well, um, we're, we're running out of time. Um, but I wanted to make sure to give you any last comments. And if you wanted to give a, a big shout out to GoPro, this would be your time. Uh, do you have any last comments? No, you know, I'm just, uh, you know, excited for the opportunity you guys, you know, give me to, to, uh, you know, do this interview and, you know, we're having a good time over here at GoPro. We just started our own uh, uh, cause support. We've we've picked a couple foundations uh, for Shriners Hospital and a and a biking program over in Africa that we're you know we're we're starting to give back to the community and and really leverage uh, social media, digital media, um, and and GoPro content to tell stories and and help you know get their messages out. So. I think GoPro's doing a really cool thing, and and um, you know just keep keep a lookout for for any ways that you know, GoPro can can help uh, you know the, the, your cause and and uh, you know causes you might know that might benefit from it. So I just appreciate the time. Hey, I appreciate it, Lonnie and hey Danny. When we were playing buddy bowl, Lonnie he he, uh, he he was a long snapper in the NFL, and he hiked it to me. Dude, it was the fastest spiral that I've ever had in my <laughs> chest. I went back like two steps. I'm like, wow. So you still got it. And I was going to try not to talk football, but uh, I know you miss it, Lonnie. You see yourself trying at it again, or you you, you retired? I think I'm done with it, man. You know, I, I had my window. You know, I got three kids now, and, you know, I, I – I'm, I'm working for them and I'm, I'm trying to make a life for them. So you know, I can't be selfish anymore and try and, you know, live on to live, live with football. And I, I had a great ride and, you know, there's no, no uh, regrets there. So although, so, 
you know, maybe I throw a couple stripes here and there. It, it, it does hurt the elbows and the back to, to do it. <laughs> oh, wow. So I got one quick question for you, or a couple quick questions. Yeah, I'll um, go ahead and let you close it out, Danny. <laughs> so I, I was just curious, who was your favorite football team growing up? Because I know you play for the Patriots, and I am definitely not a Patriot fan. I am a Raider fan. And, of course, Joel's oh, a Bronco sorry fan. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that Joel the Bronco fan, too. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, so who was your team growing up? The Los Angeles Rams. Growing up in Southern California, it was the L.A. Rams. Oh, okay. What what part of Southern California, if you don't mind me asking? I grew up in uh, Corona, California. So we were right outside Orange County where, where the Rams' uh, home stadium was. And so, you know, that, that was our big time football team, uh, you know, as well as like USC and UCLA, those were kind of our, our main uh, football teams growing up. Okay. You see, I'm originally from Santa Barbara, so I kind of know the area. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, it's kind of cool. Um, <clears throat> anyway, it was, it was really great to talk to you. Thank you for coming on to our show. Um, if there's a way that uh, you could promote us on your Facebook page saying you were on this show, that would be great. Uh, unless Joel has anything else, I think we'll let you go. Uh, right that, on, guys. That's it, Lonnie, and uh, I'll I'll text you later, brother. And I I appreciate the I appreciate the support that you give us, military guys, especially you know the GoPros and stuff. It it is um it's it's not unnoted. Let me tell you, it's not unnoted. Really appreciate it. Uh, so anytime, anytime. We'll, uh, we'll talk to you soon, brother. Okay, you guys take care. Have you too, Lonnie. Time. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Lonnie Paxton, a long, long snapper, long football snapper for not only New England. Yeah, I know I messed that up, but whatever. <laughs> uh, not only for New England, but he also played for the Denver Broncos. I, I don't know if he played for anybody else other than New England and the Denver Broncos, dude. I mean, I'm not lying. You should have one of those spirals. He And I'm sure he took it easy. That thing was fast, dude. It almost took my head off. Oh, I wouldn't mind. I mean, you know me. I love football. You love football. And I wouldn't have gone to the Buddy Bowl with you that one time. But, uh... <laughs> But uh, even after that, even after playing in that buddy ball that we did, I was so sore I couldn't right? walk for like two afterwards. So <laughs> <laughs> it's fun, but it hurts. Oh yeah, it's fun. I, like seriously, I went out and bought a cane that night, and I was walking around <laughs> in a cane for two weeks. Uh, you should have seen me, man. I had I had to have Holly drag me to the bathroom. I put my arms over her shoulders. She had to, like drag me to the bathroom because I couldn't walk. But <laughs> but it was worth it. It was fun. I enjoyed it. So. Um, we are up on our power play. Where's power the play. bell? Where's the bell? Need more cowbell. Um, right. <laughs> so, <laughs> topics we were going to talk about. Uh, this is September. Right. Uh, Jim Carrey's girlfriend recently committed suicide. And right. since it is September, suicide awareness. Right. Um, she didn't just commit suicide. She committed suicide right on the day right after he broke it off with her. Uh, I I can't even imagine uh, how Jim Carrey feels. I don't want to sit there and yell at people that are are feeling uh, suicidal, suicide wise, um, because I've I've been there. I've I've almost done it. I I know what you guys are going through. Uh, the the mental pain you feel like. You cannot live on with this mental pain. There's just too much stuff coming at you uh, at both ways. Uh, sometimes that's so strong that you forget that there's actually loved ones that you know that care about you and that would do anything to show you that hey, look, you know, tough times don't last. Tough people do. And I can't even imagine what Jim Carrey is going through at this point. Um, cause I, I mean, when, when my best friend died in Iraq, I, uh, the feeling that I had is, is, un, is unspeakable. I, I, I can't even talk about it. It hurt so bad. So I can't even imagine what Jim Carrey's going through right now. 
Oh yeah, I mean it's terrible. I mean suicide doesn't. It, I, mean, I know the person is going through a lot of pain, but that doesn't get rid of the pain. It just transfers on to the people who have to deal with it after the fact. Yeah. And it's a. Uh, uh, I've had a few friends commit suicide, and um, sometimes their hints are so subtle you don't realize it. Um, all you have to do, like every once in a while, I'll go through my Facebook uh, feed and I'll, I'll see read some of these comments. I mean, you know, I'm not one of those that like pages and do everything. I'm one of those silent stalkers in the background, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I post is like Watch funny out stuff. Exes. <laughs> so I'll sit there and I'll be scrolling through, reading everybody's posts. But then every once in a while, I see a post that it's just like I, I don't know how to deal with it and blah blah blah. It's, I mean, it's subtle. You don't know exactly what they're talking about, but I make it a point to call these people and be like, "Hey, are you okay? You know, is there is there anything I can do for you? Your Facebook post sounded kind of, you know, borderline. Um, is are you okay? That kind of stuff. And I think it's very important for people to do that. I mean, uh, you never know if somebody's thinking that. Like Joel said, he's been there. I've been there. I think almost everybody goes to that point in their life at one point. And you know, it's surprising uh, because when you think of people like. You know, when I look at you, I couldn't even imagine that you've been there. You know, you're you're happy, but it, it's we're all people are like clowns. We we're all happy and joyful outside, but when you scratch the clown, everybody has some some kind of pain, and usually it's the one that is the most joyful, and the one that's most giving is the one that is suicidal and you 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 never know yeah case in point robin williams yeah exactly and who would have thought that one was going to happen um i mean yeah and it's always the people there's a lot of people that are sitting there trying to make other people happy and feel good and those are the types of people that i worry about the most because uh you know i've been there i'm one of those people i'm one of those people that like always trying to make everybody else happier and you know uh make them feel good because i know what it's like not to feel that way you know, so a lot of people uh, that are suicidal just put on a show. It's they're acting. So, uh, yeah, that's one of those things. Uh, if you if you know a friend or uh, anybody who you know is kind of like that, but there's always things that they're not telling you. Everybody has their secrets. Um, but if you see something, a subtle hint, just just talk to them about it. Make sure they're okay, uh, and you know, don't take anything they say suicidal wise for granted. Um, the next topic. Uh, Joel, did you want to bring out the next topic? You know, I'm actually looking. I'm actually looking something up real quick uh, to do another topic. Um, we on the show we try to steer away from politics and religion, and a big thing has came up, and I want to know your opinion about it. Um, so this Kim Davis, she's getting a lot of publicity, and now it it now it's getting even bigger because now she got to meet the Pope. I don't know if you know who Kim Davis is, Danny, but evidently Kim Davis is one of those individuals that denied uh, a um, a lesbian couple uh, of of marriage. Uh, she didn't want to. Uh... Are you talking about the courthouse thing where yeah. people came? To... Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I heard about that, and you know, I'm sorry. Do your job. <laughs> You're there to do a job. I'm not going to get too much on the topic of uh, gay, straight, which one I agree the most with. Um, I think people are people and should all be treated equally, regardless of what their uh, race, sexuality, gender, anything is. Um, I'm still bent out of shape with uh, women not having to do as many push-ups and sit-ups as the guys have to do <laughs> in the military. Yeah, I don't think you that. know. I, I'm all I'm all about women being in the military, but I I really feel that, and I and I might get some hate mail after this, but <laughs> I really feel that if you know if you can take it like a if you can take it like a man, then you you can be dealt like a man and. I mean, yeah. they should do the same amount as the the guys at least the at least the sit ups because I heard oh, yeah. I heard women it's easier for them to do the sit ups than the men. Yeah, it, I mean, granted, men have more of a muscular uh, build, uh, but women can too. If you're in the military, I think push ups and sit ups should be the same no matter what your gender is because they're supposed to be doing the exact same job. 
That's just how I look at it. Right. But uh, since we're on the subject of females, why don't we talk about females in professional sports becoming coaches and mm, reps? And, yeah. You know, I mean, that's a, that's a big thing. That's a big step for women's equality and everything else. I mean, women becoming coaches. Uh, I believe they just, the Oakland Athletics just hired their first female head coach. And if I'm not mistaken, the NFL, if I – I, I think I'm not, but in the NFL, they uh, have hired a a woman referee as yes. well. Yes, I think we saw her in one of the games that the Raiders played already. So, uh, yeah, that's that's big steps. Uh, women are making big leaps and bounds for professional sports. Uh, I do remember about a year or two ago, there was a female who was trying out for kicker in the uh, NFL. Do you do you remember hearing about that? I remember a girl kicker they, they was talking about in high school, but I don't remember them talking about one trying out for the NFL. Yeah, she went to the Combine and tried out. I don't think she made it out of the Combine, but she... Well, I uh, didn't even know that, but, you know, that's funny because I didn't even know that, but I sure as hell knew that my, my, Michael Sam went into the NFL and he didn't make it. And, he he got a lot of publicity, I feel, because he he admitted that he was gay. Yeah, he he admitted he was gay, and now he's not on an NFL team. I read something recently about him he's saying in Canada. That, yeah, he's playing Canada football or uh, something around those lines. But he recently mentioned that he feels that he would be on an NFL roster if he wasn't gay, or if he hadn't come out being gay. And I'm not I'm not one to say that that's true or not uh, i'm not there i don't know his circumstances but uh i feel the nfl the coaches and players would be like if you're good enough you'd be on our spot yeah but you know it's just like the tebow thing man you don't want the circus it's not so much that yeah it's not so much that tebow you know praised god and it's not so much that michael sam says he's gay it's so much as if if you don't play them, if you have them like on the bench, for instance, Manning wasn't doing too good in the first two games of the NFL, so everybody was booing him and rooting for Osweiler to come on. You mm-hmm. know, we, it, it's just really sad that the religion and the the, the part of the sex. It just brings up a circus, and I think that is the reason why they won't, nobody will let him in the NFL. Because we saw what happened with Tebow here in in Denver. It was Mm -hmm. crazy, dude. They had billboards and stuff. It's the same thing with Johnny Football in Cleveland. You know, the whole game last week, they were just calling for Johnny Football, Johnny Football. It's like the coach is going to play whoever they feels best. Right. And the fans aren't going to be able to sway them. Now, in some cases, which I've seen in the past at the Oakland Stadium, the fans do sway them. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that was when Jamarcus Russell was playing, and we won't get into that one. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I, that's just how it is. So, anyway, we are on our two-minute warning. Two-minute warning is brought to you by Common Ground Golf Course in Aurora. A place for all, and all the game teaches. You know, that's two times in one show. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I didn't mess up. <laughs> I got to cheat you over here to the left. I won't lie. <laughs> you expect yeah, me but... to remember that? I don't even remember the date of my birthday. When's that? I have no <laughs> idea. Facebook hasn't notified me. <laughs> yeah, it hasn't notified me either, so I couldn't tell you either. But um... you No, know, you had a birthday recently. Oh, yeah, fact, my birthday uh, was Tuesday. Monday. Or, or Monday. was it Monday? It was Monday, yes. I didn't get one phone call from you. I couldn't believe it. Hey, dude, you know what? I, I gave you a bunch of texts and you yelled at me, so I kind of gave it up. <laughs> I didn't even try. That's okay. I only got like three or four phone calls anyway. I'm <clears> sure <throat> to post on your uh, Facebook page, though. Yeah, today. <laughs> Not today. It wasn't today. No, it wasn't today. Because no, it, it was the Beer 30 page. You, you said uh, it's a little late, but happy oh, birthday. Well, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, on there I did, but on on your page yourself, I I posted our little nice logo, which um, let I'll, I'll bring that up real quick, um, everybody. 
We have discussions every Friday at 1 o'clock, 1 to 1.30 on MBR Radio, Radio with a Reason. Uh, you can get the app, iPhone or Android. Go to the Play Store, the App Store. Put in Military Brotherhood Radio with the spaces, and you'll, you'll find the app real quick. Click on that one click, and you'll be able to hear us. I wanted to tell everybody that October 1st is our birthday, one year anniversary for the Beer 30 show. Uh, you know, we've provided a lot of information for troops, uh, provided a lot of information for civilians, letting them know that these programs and stuff are, are out there, and that that's for everybody's, uh, you know, benefit. Um, and I'm I'm glad that we could have this show to be able to do that. That's one thing I'm really happy about with this show. So our anniversary is October 1st. Uh, we will be posting something about it on our Facebook page. The first 10 individuals. And I made this a little tricky so people actually have to put some thought into it, Danny. They have to record their voice and send it to me saying, my name is blah, 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 and you're listening to the Beer 30 show. Okay, I'll make sure to make a note of that. So we're going to post that on our Facebook page on October 1st, see how many we get. We're even going to make a video of it, and we're going to play it Uh and Mark said that at the end of the night, and uh, we will we will notify you. the The first ten individuals will get the uh, the shirt. So I'll make sure I have Landon do it for you. <laughs> there you go, <laughs> little three year old. If a three year old can do it, I know you can do it. Right. <laughs> uh, so with the two minute warning, what did you learn today, Danny? Uh, well. I learned that Lonnie Paxson was a L.A. Rams fan. Yeah, uh, I didn't know that either. Yeah, I didn't either. I mean, that was back when the Raiders were L.A. Raiders. So that's uh, that was interesting. It, it kind of um, makes sense now that he left Denver and took a job in San Diego. Mm-hmm. Well, being from Orange County, yeah, I learned a little bit about him. And then his program with the uh, the bikes and uh, everything he does with the bikes that was very interesting. Maybe maybe uh, with your biking, maybe you could find a way to get a bike. <laughs> well, you know, I I don't know if I want to go that dangerous route. I he said no pedals and it's basically downhill. I don't know if I want to go through that. I, I went through that with skiing, man. I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of <laughs> old with the speed. I'm one of those guys. If I'm on a scooter or a motorcycle, yeah, I'm gonna go 60. I have no problem with going slow, a little slow now. I don't know if that's just me or if that's just the age creeping up. Ah, so what'd you learn today, buddy? Well, what I learned today was that. The Active Force Foundation wasn't just for military. It's for military and Silly. it's for civilians. I you know, I, I never thought of that. When I think of Active Force, I, I thought it was just military, but mm -hmm. it, it kinda it kinda makes sense now. Yeah, that's that's uh, pretty cool. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of nonprofits out there for military, but uh, what we don't mention is that there's a lot of nonprofits out there for civilians as well, and in some cases they do both. So, <clears throat> so anyway, that is time. Right, we're uh, running out of time. Do you have anything to add before we leave, Danny? I do not have anything else to add. In fact, I think my signal's getting a little bit chalky because the weather's starting to become bad out here. Oh, that's so. a good thing we're recording now. Okay. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, thank you all for listening. I hope you guys enjoy the show. Most and... definitely. And remember, everybody, every Friday at 1 o'clock from 1 to 1.30, we have a discussion kind of like what we're doing here, but more, more in depth. And we might talk to some you know, individuals, not nonprofits, but individuals during the uh, discussion. We'll jump on that. Make sure you tune in to mbrradio.us. That is MB, MBR or MB, 
radio.us and you can uh, you can find us on there on the Android you can find us on the iPhone listen to us tune in uh, it's it's awesome if you like rock if you're traveling from say Colorado to Kansas or or even San Francisco to New York it's awesome because it's nothing but rock and it's like Sirius XM you'll never lose a signal like you do when you go to places and you're like I can't find the right radio channel I can't find it you know so it's that's a it's a great tip so once again everybody thanks for listening to us and this is me and Danny signing off we will see you guys Friday bye <laughs>